A Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas discharged from the hospital today after nearly a week. The 73-year-old hospitalized last Friday for an infection and flu-like symptoms. Now, he was initially expected to be released Monday or Tuesday. The court has not said why Thomas stayed longer nor what type of infection he contracted, only clarifying it was not COVID. Now, meanwhile, his wife Jenny is in hot water for reportedly urging former President Trump's chief of staff to overturn the 2020 election. Reports from The Washington Post and CBS revealing what appear to be text messages between Thomas and Mark Meadows. Joining me now, Julia Manchester from our partners at The Hill. Julia, thank you so much for being with us. How did these texts come to light and why now? Right, so yesterday, Nicole, we saw that a number of media organizations reported that the January 6th committee um, in the House was looking over these text messages. And we know that there have been a number of text messages that were sent to Mark Meadows during the, uh, that have been sent to Mark Meadows, you know, in, during his time in the administration that really, um, you know, the committee has been looking forward uh, for, to essentially looking at his, really, you know, looking at his communications with past, with staffers at the time during the administration administration between the election and the January 6th attacks. However, these are very different because this is the spouse of a Supreme Court justice who is politically uh, pushing, or according to these texts, pushing a chief of staff to essentially go to the president and try to overturn the election or uh, somehow push him to overturn the election. So it's definitely a very fine ethical line here because we know that Clarence Thomas himself was not the one who was sending these text messages, and he was not even mentioned in the text messages. It was his wife, though, and we know that she obviously has a relationship with him, so there are ethical questions. All right, so that seems to be the major takeaway from that, but critics are saying Justice Thomas used his position to protect his wife. Supporters, however, say he should not be responsible for the actions of his partner. What are the chances that we see further action on this, like subpoenas or even impeachment? Well, we do know that this has been an ongoing issue for Justice Thomas and his wife. We know that, for example, during the 2000 presidential election, uh, Jenny Thomas was working at the Heritage Foundation, a well-known conservative think tank. And obviously, uh, that Supreme Court decision that decided the 2000 election after, um, you know, vote count issues um, was very political. Um, and it's because it de dealt with the outcome of a presidential election. So there were questions right there because Clearly, uh, Ginny Thomas's organization was involved in very much, much touting one side's argument there. Um, but it remains to be seen whether in this case, um, you know, more action will be taken. We do know that the calls to overturn the presidential election results did culminate uh, two months after the, the election in an insurrection, essentially, on the Capitol. So, you know, we're de dealing in a, with a much more potentially serious matter, um, but we'll have to see what steps the committee takes going forward and what steps Justice Thomas will face. All right, Julia Manchester from our partners at The Hill. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.